Hey guys, welcome to the Solution Architect channel and today I'm going to show you how we create a simple web application using Visual Studio Code. So go to your terminal, open a new terminal and go to wherever you're going to create your, your new project. So I'm going to start and show you what command line you can use to create a new web app. Um, web app is to run obviously a web website or web pages um, so dot net new web app and you can see I am in my project folder but I don't want to create the web app within my project folder I want to create a new folder which I say minus O for output and I call this test web app Okay, so it's created all the required um, files for us we need to run um, the project. So that now let's go to and you can just run directory here and you'll see there's a lot of files in there. I'm going to go open my Explorer. What I didn't do is I didn't add a folder or a workspace. So I'm going to add a new workspace folder. And this is my test web app. And you'll see that out of the box what it will do it will create a few files for you and before I show you and explain each and every file here I will first see if this application runs we go back to your terminal just restore okay and then dot net run So as you can see, uh, it's listening on a port. Now, I'm not going to go into detail right now what ports are and what not. Um, but this is just a, tem a temporary uh, location where the application or the web application can be browsed within your um, your browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Control and, and click on, on this. HTTPS is not set up yet. I'll show you how to do that, but let's just open the application. Control and click. And that opened up my Google browser. And there's the application. As you can see, it doesn't have HTTPS um, to secure it, and we need to secure it. But this is very, very basic. It, everything was out of the box. OK, so let me explain to you what is the default files that is added when you create a web app so first of all um, your uh, CS project file it's got a few uh, references in there it will automatically add a reference to asp.netcore.app and also to the razor.design now razor is the way that the, the pages is created then you got your your startup C sharp file uh, let me go to programs first because program.cs is always the first that's going to be executed by the compiler. So it will go through program and, s and look for main and you can see main is now calling to create a, a web host builder which means that, that this method here that's, that this one is calling is creating a, a builder to 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 run the, the web application as you as you saw it was localhost um, and it was e either HTTPS on port 500 and 5001 or HTTP uh, 5000 
This way Web Builder will create, uh, will start up the whole application, but what it will do, it will base it on this configuration um, file, uh, this configuration class, startup, which is this one here. And there's a lot of things happening within this configuration out of the box. Um, just to get your application up and running, you don't need to, to change anything inside here. But all you need to know for now is that it sets up the application to be able to run in any browser. There's some default things in here, like it will handle um, HTTPS redirection. Um, it can use static files and it will also use the cookie policy. So when you run your application, it's important when you run it in Europe that you have to have a cookie policy that pops up. Um, and this uses some sort of pattern which I'll, I can go into later. But all you need to know for now is don't touch this if you just want to write a very out-of-the-box web application. Then you've got your app, app settings.json file. Um, all this is nothing in here right now. It's just um, this is normally where you put in your connection string to your database, uh, any default settings you want to use within your application, um, things like that. And then you can create also an app settings for different environments. So normally a developer will start having a de development environment. You'll have a, a testing environment, a staging environment, and a production environment. And each file will look different. Then you have wwroot. Now this is files that you, if, if for more advanced um, programmers or web developers, if you want to control how the um, the view needs to look like, you go to CSS file, which is your style sheet. Um, this is how the application will look like. So the borders, the font sizes, um, all of that that you see on the web, web website that pops up, you can control it from here. Th that makes it that each and every page looks exactly the same and is in the same type of format. Then you get your JavaScript folder. Um, this is where you can add um, default JavaScript for your site. Um, at the moment, I don't think there's anything in there. You can write your JavaScript here and you can reference it within your HTML page. Then you've got libraries in here. These libraries are and you need to read up if you un want to understand how Bootstrapper works. So Bootstrapper is basically um, a CSS style sheet framework that is um, focused on building responsive applications, especially if you want to run an application on mobile as well as on a web browser. Uh, it needs to be responsive. It also uh, look at the design of how uh, the web page and HTML pages uh, work together. Um, for beginners, do not try and change this because this will change the way your application works. So I normally say to for beginners, stay out of this un unless you have experience in changing these files. Properties. Properties are uh, has got a JSON file in there. Uh, for launch uh, set settings and this is what you can use to actually when you launch it on a different platforms for example IIS Express that it will use a specific port for SSL and and you can set your settings here you'll see the the normal settings here that we've got um, that when we run the application it will go to a specific port and you can change this to any port that you desire The next one is pages. Now, before I go on, I, I would like to just say that this is not the way that I would create a web application. I would use um, the MVC, Model View Controller pattern, um, because it gives you much more flexibility on how you implement your web application. But this is very basic, out of the box, if you want to create something simple, maybe for yourself at home or whatever, use this, um, this pattern only. MVC can be very complex. 
So I would suggest then rather play around with this type of a web application before you move on to MVC. So out of the, you know, what what gets kicked off is the the index file is always the beginning file, the, the, the main file. And so when the application kicks off, it will always search for the index file and actually display the index file. So if you look at the index file, it's it's actually very basic. Let's make a change to the index file. We say, welcome the solution of the channel subscribers. Okay, so let's run this, but I'm going to show you a different way in Visual Studio Code how to run your applications, or in this case also how to debug it, but let's just run it first using the debug window here. And you can see there, if you if you just click debug here with no configuration, this won't work. So you need to go down here and, and select and say, okay, the configuration for this test application, this web app, use that and run it on .NET Core. So that will then know exactly how to run the application. So I'm going to start this. And you can see it kicked off here, starting the application, and it will then pop up your default browser. And there you have it. Welcome to the Solution Architect Channel subscri subscriber. So let's go back to our files and let me just explain quickly. For each CSHTML file, like our index.cshtml, you'll get a, a C sharp file where you can execute code. Um, on the server side. So HTML will run on the browser and remember always the CS file will run on the server side. If for example you need to save information to a database um, you'll pass the data from your HTML file to your CS file, to your c file and that will make a connection to your database. So that's just very high level. I will get into that detail in some of my next videos coming. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and click the notification button uh, to receive much more content. Thank you.